we have uh, what are all our front chassis leads. So that's all this stuff right here. So everything from like the front USB 3 uh, to the front leads for like power, reset, HD audio, USB 3, and whatnot. So we're just going to go ahead and run each one of these through to their corresponding points and uh, get these guys connected. So first up, let's see what we have here. Okay, we've actually got uh, a SATA cable. And so the SATA cable uh, is going to be for this top portion right here. So they ha we have the ability that we can go ahead and mount a drive inside of this, um, but we're gonna go ahead and need to be able to provide data to it. So of course, that's on the inside here. So we'll just go ahead and run that uh, to one of the actual SATA uh, ports. If you will, uh, want to go ahead and have the fastest performance, you would use the primary SATA 6G. Uh, and then if you uh, didn't necessarily have to have the highest performance, but still wanted very fast performance, you could use the supplemental secondary SATA controller. Uh, and this would pretty much probably be transparent for mechanical hardware, both offering the same performance. If it was an SSD, you would see a little bit more of a differential, uh, depending on the controller being used. Okay, so we went ahead and connected that one. All right, next up we've got a uh, USB header. So USB header, that's going to be all these guys right here at the bottom. So we're gonna route that cable through the bottom. This is also keyed. If you can maybe check out that keying, you can see right there that uh, one of the pins is blocked. So we have essentially five on top, four on the bottom. So we just essentially need to match that pairing. So we're just gonna go next up, run it straight into there. That keeps things nice and tight right there as you can see. So that's going to be nice for the cable routing. Next up, we're going to take all four of our front uh, chassis connections, as you can see right here, and we're going to run those through. So these are going to be for all your power buttons, LEDs, stuff like that here at the top. And we're going to same thing. We're going to run that guy down here at the bottom, but we're not going to make those connections yet. We're going to go ahead and use our Q connector uh, in a little bit to make that easier, but we're essentially going to run those to this uh, front header right here. Next up, we've got our HD audio connection. So for the HD audio, that's actually going to be this header all the way over here. Uh, or if you were using a discrete sound card, such as like a Zonar DG, uh, DGX, or DSX, or something in that class, the header would be on the card itself. So same thing, we're just going to go ahead and route through the bottom and pull through. So I just need to go ahead and pull this cable in and get this settled in there. Okay, that's for my HD audio. I can go ahead and pull that in there and I can still have it looking pretty clean. All right, and looks like we've got one more right here and that's going to be for front USB 3. So that's going to be this block right here directly next to the 24 pin power connection. And so it looks probably like optimal routing is gonna be through this header right here. Let's go ahead and run that guy. This is a little bit of a stiff, big block, so you just gotta be a little bit careful with it because the pins here are very sensitive and they're very light. So we're gonna get that guy settled in there and pull that back in. Okay guys, so we're just gonna recover our connection points here in terms of the cables that we're connecting. So we've got our eight pin CPU power connection. We're then moving over here to our 24 pin PSU power uh, for the motherboard. Uh, directly below that, we've got our front USB 3 uh, cable. And then right underneath that, we've gone ahead and run a cable from the SATA docking bay at the top of our chassis. And that runs into a serial ATA port. Uh, from there, next up, we've got our front USB, that's USB 2 header as opposed to the USB 3 header. And then next over here, we've got an HD audio lead, uh, which connects to the motherboard for the front audio connections. And lastly, we have these individual strands, which we're going to go ahead and connect to our Q connector. And once we've connected them to the Q connector, we'll go ahead and reattach them here to the front chassis leads for power, reset, power LED, hard drive LED, things like that. And if we don't want to go ahead and have a reset button, we can run the reset header directly to our DRCT header, which would work as a direct uh, initialization sequence for the UEFI. So if you press your reset button, instead of restarting your system, it'll reboot you straight into the UEFI. Okay guys, we're just gonna go ahead and quickly make our connections here. So we've got for our power button, we're gonna take one for our hard drive LED. And then we've got one over here for our power LED. And we 
just want to make sure to follow the signs that say plus or minus. Okay, once we've gone ahead and uh, made those connections, we're just going to go ahead and settle that into the front lead itself. And now we've got all our front leads connected. Okay guys, so next up we're just going to go ahead and quickly run our data cables uh, for our storage devices. So these are the serial ATA cables. So first up we're going to go ahead and run one for the ODD. So I'm just going to go ahead and affix this right to the back of the ODD. And then we're just going to run that back out through the top. And then we're actually going to run that back in. Just to minimize on being able to see that cable. So let's go ahead and run that right here. Up to you as far as where you'd like to run that. Whether you want to run that on the add-in controller or whether you want to run that on the Intel controller. Uh, this would be actually fine to run on the add-in controller. No issues there in terms of performance, and it's entirely usable there, and you could keep the fastest speed ports for storage devices or storage expansion. Next up, we've got one for the SSD. So let's go ahead and first connect that here on the back. We've got that running there to our SSD. And we're going to run one more in here. And just snap that into the PCH. Okay, we've got one more. And last one's going to be for our mechanical hard drive. Run one more right underneath that. And we'll just keep that on the same header. Okay, so that's our three data points. Uh, all connected to the actual serial ATA, connected to each device, so we're good to go there.